They're right. And now we're live. 30 minutes into this, after the first two points. In the proper context, this is true. And going around naming somebody else's wife as your wife is not what we're talking about. You can't do that. Why? Because the Word of God doesn't support it. True. You know, if you're going to name something and claim something and frame something, I, I know they kind of do it. You know, the, 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 like the Cap said, the, the blab it and grab it bunch, you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, they don't really understand where we are coming from from those who aren't Looney Tunes. So we, we got, I remember Jerry Savelle a number of years ago said this. He said, let's face it, folks, there are some squirrels in the camp. And he was right. We had people going out and confessing stuff you would not believe. And, and they had no basis of faith for it. There was no Bible to support with that other than you can have what you say. You can have what you say if what you say lines up with this. As far as using biblical principles. Now, if you want to speak unbelief, you're going to get unbelief. But as far as <coughs> from a Christian, biblically theological position, if you're going to have what you say and, and try to use the Bible to give, that's what I'm after. You know, quit quoting the Bible. I can have what I say, and I believe that I received so-and-so's wife as my wife. There's that, that, the Bible doesn't support that because the Lord hates divorce. And looking on another woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already. God hates adultery. God's not for adultery. So it, that, the Word of God is not going to support that basis. Okay? So, but, you know, those who, those who sarcastically refer to speaking the Word and believing in your heart and receiving it as a name and claim and frame it much, right on, we are. We are. And, I, and I'm not even going to be ashamed of it. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to be moved off of the position that when we take God's word and place it in our heart and believe what it says and act on it and let it govern our life, like we already said, that, you know, what we, um, we're governed by what we speak and what we speak comes out of the word of God being in our heart in abundance and that will come back, we'll speak it, we'll govern us. We can look at insurmountable circumstances, that mountains of life that, you know, that will move if we will speak it. Our possession is preceded by our confession. Because that's what Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Okay? And when we're acting on this, so you have to what? Believe your words. You know, I, I better put Romans up here. You know, kind of between one and two, we're going to put Romans. We're going to put Bowmans. Baromans. Okay. Romans 10, 8 through 10. Okay? And that kind of goes here, and it goes here. All right? In order to be fully persuaded that what you're speaking is going to happen, you've got to believe what you're saying. Now, the good thing is, if you believe you're, if, if what you're saying comes out of here, then it's going to be a whole lot easier to believe that. Because you're not basing this on you. This isn't based on you. This is based over here. God's Word. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Okay? God can't lie. It's impossible for God to lie. Amen? God is not a liar. God's Word is true. Forever, O oh Lord, that Word is settled in heaven. Amen. God's word is forever settled in heaven. Okay? When God speaks, it's, it's fact. It's truth. Okay? So when God says, by the stripes of Jesus, you're healed, that, that's, that's still just true. Now, you may have Christians who try to theologicalize that into, well, that's, you know, or spiritualize that into, uh, that was uh, for the Jews only in the Old Covenant. Well, <laughs> Then why did Peter quote it in the New? He made it New Testament reality. You know, okay? And, and if you remember, the book of Hebrews says that the things that happened to Israel were written for our example, our example. 
We do this, God's going to do that. That's our example. Okay? All right, so praise the Lord. So, um, again, we'll, we'll just say, number one, our faith will never rise above the confession of our lips. What we say governs our life. Where we get the words to speak come out of the Word of God because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. Then, our possession is preceded by our confession. Mark 11, 23, Whosoever shall say unto the mountain, Be removed, be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart. Shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass, shall have whatsoever he saith. Mountain won't move until you speak to it. Okay? It's just not going to move. But this qualifier for this statement is whosoever can do it. If you're a believer, you can do it. All right? And then, believe your words. We're kind of saying that's not really quite as separate as we're making it, but it is, it's, it's part of this. You know? Shall not doubt, but shall believe that the things which he saith. Shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he saith. Shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he saith. And so we look again, we look over into 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay? Paul writing and saying this, he says, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. And so Paul calls believing and speaking you can call something a claim it frame it or the glab, grab, it, glab it, uh, grab it and blab it bunch but the word of God calls us the Spirit of faith bunch. We believe that we speak it, okay? Believing and speaking is spirit of faith. Okay? Spirit of faith. Praise the Lord. 1 John 4, 4 says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, my brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, speak on these things. Romans 12, 3. For I say through the grace given unto me that every man among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And see, this, if we would have listened to this back in, in, in the day, we wouldn't have gotten in trouble. Wouldn't have thought of himself more highly than he ought. So don't go out and confess and stupid stuff. You're thinking of yourself more highly than you ought. But to be sober, see? We're to be sober-minded. In other words, we're to be serious. We're to approach the, the Word of God with a seriousness and sobriety. It's not a flippancy. Amen? Because it's holy. It's God's Word. It's going to govern our life if we let it by what we speak. It's just coming out of the Word. Okay? We, we can get religious about being excited about faith and you know it's a turn off to people i've been around and they, they turn me off you kind of get me <laughs> you're weird you know your your excitement's almost like manufactured it's not real because it's not coming out it's just you know no let me tell you, let me tell you if you're believing speaking because you've been feeding on the word and it's working that's just a spirit of faith spirit of faith isn't weird you don't get the, the, the creepy crawlies when you get around people who are, got, who are in faith. I've been around Christians that got the creepy crawlies around them. I never got that around Brother Hagen or Brother Copeland and those guys. When I was, you know, had them hand it, <coughs> they, you know, they hands on me. That's what some are on, Brother Hagen, Brother Copeland. I mean, all, they've all laid hands on me in my, in my life at some point. And uh, I never got the creepy crawlies. I've gotten around some people that you, you think, don't you get near me with your hands. 
Uh, ooh. Yeah, back off. Now, be sober, because God's got to every man the measure of faith. And so and every man becomes a what? Okay. So believing your words, but we understand this is not based on, you know, I gotta believe what I say, I gotta believe what I say. We understand that this is where we're this is where we're pointing to. We, we always keep coming back here. No matter where we are in this 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 process of step one, step two, step three, no matter where you are in that, you keep coming back right here to the Word of God. There's just no way around it. There's not an expedited path through it, around it, circumventing it. No matter where you are in the, any of this and where you maintain and where you stay, you go through that. It's the Word of God. Even if it's the spirit of faith, but we know what? Faith comes by hearing or the message heard and the message heard by the Word of God. So if it's the spirit of faith, it came how? If you're believing and speaking it, it came out of the Word of God. You were, you were sitting under someone who was teaching and ministering under the anointing of the Word of God, preaching under the power of the Word of God. They were preaching what the Word of God says. They were saying what the Word says. They weren't just giving their opinion about, you know, um, come on down, this might be your night to get saved. Well, they, they, they ain't read their Bible. Today's a day of salvation. Local pastor on television one time said that. Come on down. This might be your day. You never know what God's going to do. No, I'm not going to give an altar call like that. Why? Because the Bible says today if you'll hear. And harden not your heart as they did in the day of provocation. He said, I'll hear. Amen? Today's the day of salvation. When? Not tomorrow. Not when the Lord takes a liking to you. This might be your day. You just never know. You know, the day that you do is, is your day because, you know, but, you know, you could do that anytime. You can't just say that it was, you know, well, it was their day. No. They chose whether to or whether not to. Okay? All right. Paul writes to, uh, in 2 Thessalonians 1, 3, We are bound to thank God always for you, brother, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. And let's finish up over here, real quick over in Numbers 13. Talking about, you know, believe in your words. We'll highlight Numbers 13, 33. We'll pick up earlier than that. Okay. Um, starting verse 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. Now, what happened? Remember, the ten, they sent the 12 spies in. They came back. When they got back, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. They got back and, you know, they, they, surely the land floweth with milk and honey. You know, it's flowing with milk and honey. There's milk and honey. Oh, and by the way, and giants. This is doubt. Remember, if you'll doubt not in your heart. Okay? And so they say this. You know, it's surely land that flows with milk and honey. They brought back the grapes on the, on the staff. One cluster. On, it took two men with a staff to bring back a cluster of grapes. I've, I've gone and picked grapes. I ain't never found a cluster of grapes that big. It took two men with a staff, a, a, a pole between them to carry one cluster. You can carry five or six in each hand. Nothing like that, okay? The giants were their, was their point of unbelief. They didn't really believe God was going to give them the land. But Caleb stilled the people for Moses. He said, let us go up at once and possess the land, for we are well able. See, Caleb, what did Caleb have? Put it there in Joshua. 
has faith. Okay? We are well able to overcome it. But the men that went out with him said, we, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, then they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land of which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people we saw were men of great stature. Now listen to this. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which were come of the giants. And we were, listen to this, in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. They gave an opening to the enemy. Because you'll find out later when you study uh, Israel going in, it actually gets there. They're like, you know, after the 40 years of wandering around the wilderness, man, God always gets the last laugh on the devil. They wonder what took them so long. They've been waiting for 40 years for them to come over and wipe them out. They're, they're afraid of them. They didn't know what they possessed, and the people over there can't even enjoy what they got because they know they're coming to wipe them out. But they gave them a, but the, but the ten spies gave them a boost of whatever because they said we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. What happened? They believed what they saw more than what God said. God never told them to go over there and see if they could take the land. He just said, go spy it out and see what's there. They were supposed to come back and tell them what we, what we got there. And Caleb had it. Caleb And Joshua, of course, Joshua had it. We're well able. We're well able to go up and take them. We can get her done. Call me Joshua, I mean, Caleb, the, the cable guy. Get her done. All right? What is this? It's the spirit of faith. See, he believed God, God had promised them this land. I'm going to bring you to a land that floweth with milk and honey. They already had the promises. I'm going to bring you to a land that floweth with milk and honey. Caleb believed it. And after they went in and he went around for, you know, I guess he was about, um, I don't know how old Caleb was at this point in time. I guess he was around 40 or so. They go around for 40 years. They finally get in there and about five years later. So man, he's about 85. He comes back to Moses. Hey, look. I mean, you know, Joshua, not Moses. Comes back to Joshua and goes, hey, look now. Moses told me I could have that 45 years ago. Now, what I want you to do is release me from doing anything else here because I'm going to go take my mountain. He even looked at that mountain for 45 years waiting to get there and get it. He goes, that mother giant's off his mountain. 85-year-old dude. Well, that's not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. What? He believed God, and the Spirit of faith moved him. And he conquered and took his mountain. He got his mountain. Amen? Because he said, we're well able. At 40, they were well able, and it wasn't because they were stronger or bigger. The Lord was on their side. Amen? And at 85, he still believed that they were well able. He didn't know about the rest of the bunch. He knew he was well able because he went and took his mountain. You know? Talk about playing king of the mountain. But he, played it for, he played it for keeps. <laughs> you're not coming back up here because you're dead. Amen? Praise the Lord. All right. Hallelujah. Praise God. Did y'all get anything out of that? Anybody mixed up where we're going? Because well, I started with one over here and two up there and three down there. And, you know, oh, well. Still good. Amen. Praise the Lord. The offering envelope, Brother Joe, is here to take that from you. Um, those who joined us, joined us late. We're sorry. There's, we were having an issue here where we're meeting with uh, Internet access. Uh, suddenly, um, we can't get on. We just believe that they're having some events here that just too many people are using the bandwidth. Of the, uh, of the place, and we can't get clarity um, for our own bandwidth to get out. And so we, we, they finally moved out. The bandwidth opened up. And um, so, praise the Lord. <clears throat> Shandai. 
New place is coming. Debt's going and place is coming. Debt goeth in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen? Because money cometh in Jesus' name. New place cometh in Jesus' name. Enlargement comes in Jesus' name. Amen? Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they tithe and give. And we bless them might, mightily in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for all that's done for the kingdom. And heaven's windows are open unto them. And you pour out blessings they don't have room enough to receive. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give. And we bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you Sunday. Don't forget, if you're coming Sunday, uh, international uh, meal. And, you know, we, we just kind of do that. In other words, if you like to cook Mexican, if you like to cook Italian, if you, please don't cook English. I, I, I've, I've had English food. We don't want English. Please don't bring, bring uh, Yorkshire pudding or, you know. I mean, listen, I, I'll be honest with you. I was there and got a pizza. And you don't think you can ruin a pizza. The Brits can. Maybe it's because they were hungry for something else in life. <laughs> I mean, that's to conquer somebody and find some good food somewhere. Yeah, well, they did. They did. And then we took over. <laughs> They're still mad. <coughs> all right. Love y'all. God bless you. We'll see you next time. All right? Anyway, Sunday morning, we had to be out of this room, these rooms, before 1 o'clock. Meaning we'll be able to heat our food up in here until service ends, and then we got to immediately transfer it to the sanctuary room. Set some tables up and get the stuff on the tables over there. Bring bags to put your stuff in, your, your serving utensils, your leftovers, whatever. Because you're not going to be able to get back into the kitchen. There's a birthday party going on in here. And uh, I mean, we're glad we can use that room. It's a little bit of a whatever, not having it for the you no. Know, I, I wish they would want it for the birthday party, but apparently not. So we're moving over there. Okay? We all good? Yes. I bind that lying spirit. <laughs> <laughs>